Reynard Sanaga came from a conservative Catholic family in Indonesia, and he traveled to the UK on a student visa to study architecture at the University of Manchester in 2007, all on his father's dime. But while he was studying at university, he was terrorizing hundreds of young men in the Manchester area. Welcome to History's Biggest Villains. Sanaga was born on February 19th, 1983 in Jambi, Sumatra, Indonesia, and grew up in Depak. Growing up in a wealthy, conservative Catholic family, he is ethnically from the Batak people. After completing a degree in architecture at the University of Indonesia in Depak in 2006, he moved to the UK on a student visa and began to study in August 2007 at Manchester University, where he completed a master's degree in planning in 2009 and another master's in sociology in 2011. Remaining in Manchester, he began to study for a PhD in human geography in August 2012 from Leeds University, which he did not complete. His thesis entitled Sexuality and Everyday Transnationalism Among South Asian Gay and Bisexual Men in Manchester was submitted in August of 2016 and was assessed as a fail, but he was permitted to amend and resubmit it and was working on his thesis at the time of his arrest. He was financially supported by his father, who was a banker that had moved into the palm oil sector. While in Manchester, Sanago was an openly gay man living not far from Manchester's gay village, and he reportedly had many partners. Sanaga lived in a flat in central Manchester which acted as a base for his assaults. He would wait for men to leave nightclubs and bars before leading them to his flat, often offering them somewhere to have a drink or call a taxi. Giving them a drug drink believed to have been spiked with GHB, Sanaga would then assault the victims while they were unconscious and film the attack on his phone. When the victims woke up, many of them had no memory of what had happened. And I'm, I'm going to give you a brief history on GHB. GHB, also called gamma hydroxybutyrate, is also referred to as the date rape drug. It gives users a feeling of euphoria and can increase their sex drive. But increasing the dose by a fraction, even less than a milliliter, can be fatal. Overdosing on GHB, which is pretty easy when it's mixed with alcohol or other drugs, can make people incoherent, suffer convulsions, lose consciousness, and stop breathing altogether. Professor Adam Winstock, who is a consultant psychiatrist and founder of the Global Drug Survey, warns, it's a drug that poses huge risks when people are out there trying to use it for fun. If you take one extra drop of GHB, then 20 minutes later, you're unconscious, he says. Sanago, who was studying for a PhD at the University of Leeds at the time, had carried out his attacks over several years. In June 2017, his last victim, an 18-year-old amateur rugby union player, regained consciousness during the assault, fought off his attacker, and reported the incident to the police. Sanago initially tried to claim that this was a homophobic attack, because he was badly beaten and hospitalized, and then the victim was initially arrested by police on suspicion of grievous bodily harm. A subsequent examination of Sanaga's iPhone by the police led to the discovery of more than three terabytes of digital video evidence. Like, I need you to understand how much three terabytes is. That is 3,000 gigabytes of videos. 3,000 gigabytes. They found three terabytes of digital video evidence of his assaults and rapes. Many of his victims were traceable because Sanaga kept their phones, watches, ID cards, and he had used social media to contact his unknowing victims online. I'm telling you, man, criminals get dumber and dumber. The discovery led to the launch of the largest rape inquiry in British history. Assistant Chief Constable Mobs Hussein said the true extent of Sanaga's offending would probably never be known. We suspect he's offended over a period of 10 years, he said. The information and evidence where we are going from is largely from trophies he's collected from the victims of his crimes. In victim impact statements read out in court, one victim said Sanaga had destroyed a part of his life, quote unquote, while another said, I hope he never comes out of prison and he rots in hell. I had periods where I can't wake up and face the day, another added. Many victims were unaware that they had been assaulted until they contacted the police. Lisa Walters of the St. Mary's Sexual Assault Referral Center in Manchester, where victims received support, said some men found this very difficult to process, with some experiencing mental health issues and suicidal thoughts. Across four separate trials, Sanaga was found guilty of 136 counts of rape 
eight counts of attempted rape, 14 counts of sexual assault, and one count of assault by penetration against a total of 48 victims. And these 48 were out of a possible 206 that they believed that he raped. 206 people. At the hearing, Judge Suzanne Goddard QC said Sanaka was quote unquote an evil serial sexual predator who has preyed upon young men who wanted nothing more than a good night out with their friends. In my judgment, you are a highly dangerous, cunning, and deceitful individual who will never be safe to be released, she said, adding that the decision to release prisoners is made by the parole board. The student who denied the charges had claimed that all the sexual activity was consensual and that each man had agreed to be filmed while pretending to be asleep. A defense described by the judge as ludicrous, because it was. Sanago pleaded not guilty to all charges made against him, with the result that his victims had to endure relating evidence in court and that the videos be shown to the jurors and others present at the trials. In his own defense, he claimed to have been playing sex games with the other man playing dead in order to fulfill his fantasies. He claimed that the encounters were consensual, a claim that was later proved false as victims were heard snoring in the videos. Sanaga attended St. Chrysostom's Church, a liberal congregation of the Church of England, and the church provided Sanaga with a character reference for his trial. Suzanne Goddard remarked during the sentencing of the second trial that, it is almost beyond belief that someone who could profess some Christian faith could at the same time have been committing such evil crimes. The St. Chrysostom's Church later distanced himself from Sanaga after his conviction. Judge Goddard said the scale and enormity of Sanaga's offending meant that it was accurate for one of his victims to have described him as a monster. She added that Sanaga had shown not a jot of remorse and at times appeared to be actually enjoying the trial process. Following the sentencing, Ian Rushton from the CPS said Sanago was the most prolific rapist in British legal history and possibly the world. His extreme sense of sexual entitlement almost defies belief and he would have no doubt still been adding to his staggering tally had he not been caught, he said. He added that he thought Sanaga took a particular pleasure in preying on straight men, considering most of the men that he did assault which were straight. That, that probably is an accurate assessment. In the first two trials, he was given 88 concurrent life sentences with a minimum 30 year term before being considered for parole. This was raised to 40 years by the Court of Appeal on December 11, 2020. His earliest date for a parole board hearing would be in 2060 when he is 77 years old. After the trial, his father, Saibun Sanaga, in an interview with BBC Indonesia, expressed his opinion a day after the sentencing, where he was quoted as saying that his son, quote unquote, got what he deserved and that we accept the verdict. His punishment fits his crimes. I don't want to discuss the case any further. However, his mother, Norma Wadi Salain, told the Sunday Times in 2020 that when she visited him in the hospital in 2017, she had wondered if Sanaga's final victim had made up the story. She also stated that she was not aware that he was gay, saying, we are a good Christian family who do not believe in homosexuality. He is my baby. So yes, homosexuality is a greater sin than drugging and assaulting hundreds of people, but okay. The charity SafeLine reported a record increase in calls to its hotline for male sexual abuse survivors in the aftermath of the case. Duncan Craig, founder of Survivors Manchester, a charity supporting several of Sanaga's victims, stated that it had started a national conversation regarding men opening up about sexual abuse. As of now, he's in jail where he should be, and this whole situation just opens up this debate about how society sees men as victims and even then the victims because they're men think about how traumatizing that is think about how embarrassing that would sound to you to come to a police officer and say hey i got assaulted by another dude he drugged me and like assaulted me like that probably is embarrassing but we, we have to remove that stigma and we have to make it okay 
for everyone to feel like they can be heard for everyone to feel like their stories can be heard and they won't be shunned as victims regardless of what they've gone through and their gender or whatever. You know what I mean? But I'm glad this freaking psycho is in jail because he wouldn't listen. The only reason he got away with this many offenses was because he chose men and he knew that men are most likely are not going to report that they've been assaulted by another dude. Especially grown men, you're, they're they're going to try to keep that because that's a that's like a that's like a, a harm to your manhood. You got your manhood stolen, and now you you want to sit here and tell people that? Like, no, you know what I'm saying? Those people are not going to want to do that. But um, thank you for watching. That is the end of this story. I hope you you know what I'm saying. I'm sure there there are there are many uh hotlines if you are a survivor of abuse. I think there's a hotline. I'll put the number to the hotline if you're in America. I know there's an American hotline. I'll put the number to the hotline somewhere on the screen. You can call. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, like, even though I talk about these terrible stories, I still feel like people should get help if they need to get help. You know what I mean? But, uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to putting these on a podcast form where you can listen to them. Like without the video and all the, without like the pictures, if you want to just listen while you're doing something, I'm look. I'm probably gonna I'm gonna have to download the audio from all my history's biggest villains and put them on like every platform. So I'm gonna find a way to do that. But uh, thank you so much for the support, and I hope you all have a good day. I'm out. Peace.